Well, since we all have one and we all desperately hope that it continues operating properly, we're going to be talking about heart health and who better than our friend Dr. David Rising. Thank you so much for once again joining us, being available today, but also importantly being ready and available on the 23rd of June. What's going on? Well, first, it's an honor to be here with you, one of Arizona's iconic figures. It's a real honor to be here. Icon, you know, is Greek for geezer. <laughs> okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, June 23rd, we're, we're going to be doing another live heart procedure from Honor Health. And we're, we're so excited to be uh, bringing another uh, live case, live heart procedure from that program. Well, everybody was talking about the last one, and uh, the idea that you're doing, you're doing heart surgery on television uh, is, is absolutely astounding, but a delight for us because the television happens to be AZTV Channel 7. It tells you how far we've come with the treatment of heart disease. Uh, let's, let's talk about something that we were chatting about before, and that is stints bypass, right. bypass stint. There's a difference in recovery time. There definitely is. If this were the 1980s or even 1990s, two thirds of all of the heart procedures we were doing, it was open heart surgery. Uh, that was the primary treatment that we offered patients with coronary disease. But over the years, what has happened is there's been a decrease in the number of bypass surgeries and an increase in the less invasive stent procedures. And even when we do stent procedures, even 10 years ago, most of those were being done by going into the artery of the leg. The patients usually stayed a day or two in the hospital. Today I did three stent procedures and I did all of them by just going up the patient's wrist to the heart and all three of those patients will be going home today. The recovery from stents is, from a stent procedure is, is very quick. With bypass surgery, they usually stay in the, in the hospital five or six days, but with stent procedures, many if not most of those patients, those catheter-based procedures, those patients are going home the same day as the procedure. Perhaps it would be a real service to the audience to determine exactly what it is that we're talking about because we automatically assume, oh, well, everybody knows the difference between a bypass and a stint. Can you give me a definition in, say, one sentence what a bypass actually is? Absolutely. And what a stint is? A bypass, with bypass surgery, first, it's open heart surgery. It's an open chest procedure. Mm. And generally, we take blood vessels, generally from the leg, and we reroute the blood around the blocked blood vessels in the heart. We sort of redo the plumbing of the heart, if you will. But it is a, a general anesthesia and an open chest procedure. And because it's an open chest procedure, it's a longer recovery. With stents, we can uh, pass a long tube called a catheter, either from the leg or from the wrist, up to the heart, and we take a mesh device, like a spring from an ink pen, you know, think of a stent as a spring on an ink pen, and we can go into the blocked artery and open that artery. We leave the stent in place and it maintains the openness or the integrity of the artery. It's a catheter-based procedure and it doesn't require an open chest. But how does a, a specialist in your field decide which one to do? Well, more and more, about 98% of the of the patients that we see with coronary disease can be fixed with a stent or treated with a stent and not with bypass. So the overwhelming majority of patients who come into our hospital these days with coronary disease are treated with stents. It's less common to need bypass surgery anymore. I know the basic dread of anybody in your field is anybody outside of your field diagnosing themselves. So let's talk about what it is that we should be looking at when we're at home. Does it have to be something as serious as a heart attack? It doesn't have to be a heart attack. And in fact, most patients who have a heart attack, and a heart attack is a sudden closing of one of those blood vessels, but most of those patients who have a heart attack will have warning signs for days, even weeks, 
before the heart attack. And that's generally chest pain, chest pressure, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, sweating, nausea. It can be any one of a number of symptoms that patients experience. And as we've talked, men may have very different symptoms than women, so one has to be very vigilant. But it doesn't have to be a heart attack. That that brings a patient to the cardiologist, usually there are warning signs or warning symptoms. Well, just a moment though, can you briefly tell us the difference in the symptoms between women and men? Men more classically have chest pain, chest pressure, chest tightness. Women oftentimes will have more subtle symptoms, different symptoms. We talked previously on this show that women can have neck or jaw pain, shortness of breath, even sweating. And in fact, some people with heart disease may have no symptoms at all. I remember a study, Pat, from 1989 uh, in the geriatric literature, uh, which uh, demonstrated that about 15% of patients, mostly women, who develop heart disease have no symptoms at all. Ooh. So there's, it's a matter of being vigilant, seeing your internal medicine doctor, living healthy, but if any signs or symptoms of heart disease uh, are, are, are suggested, getting in to see a cardiologist. Tell us, if you will, once again, the procedure itself that you're doing live the 23rd on TV7. We are going to do a procedure, a stent procedure, whereby uh, we will pass a long tube, a catheter, either up the patient's leg or up the patient's wrist to the heart and open a blocked artery using some really high-end, very technical uh, imaging procedures, and we will implant a stent and show the audience how we go from blocked arteries of the heart to wide open arteries of the heart. Good medicine with Dr. David Reisig. And good television with AZTV7, June 23rd. You're not gonna miss this one, are you?